champion Aaron Williams and your challenger Idris Edmund. Now Idris has had no, shall we say, is not a stranger to winning because Murder and currently the UBA World Champions. However, a couple of years ago, you and I were having this discussion over at Parkway against Mikel Gobo, and uh, you did not like the result of that. How does this change? What changes do you need to make for today's match? Uh, I'm throwing a little better now. Um, pitch changes. Uh, I'm more into it now, so I think it's going to be a different outcome today. Aaron, you're the champ. I am. Last time around we had this discussion, it was against Chris Aponte. You set the tone immediately, you shot a 300 and then you rolled from there. Yeah, that, that was a good match. We, we both, I struggled earlier that day in the playoff match. Uh, went, went focused and was able to shoot 300 after that first game. It was set the tone early for that, for that match. Was, that's how I got to go. What's the difference between that match and this one with Mr. Edmonds on my left hand side? Well, the biggest difference is that I'm, I'm defending, I'm not chasing. So it's easier. He's hungry. That's a hungry man right there. He wants his belt. He's hungry. I know what that feels like. So I got to make sure I, I want to keep eating though. So he might be hungry. I want to feed myself. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now. Uh, any last comments from either of you? Oh, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. This one's going to be fun. Your champion is Aaron Williams from Pocket Kings. And he is going to be starting this match. This is a best of seven, and this is... Okay, great. And this is for the heavyweight title. So, right now, your champions for the Pocket Kings. Now, what's interesting is that the UBA has over 300 teams in over 20 districts. We're going to start off with the strike. Pocket Kings and Murder, Inc. know each other very well because they are in the same district, which is Northwest New Jersey. Now, what makes this real interesting is that Murder, Inc. currently has won last year's UBA championship. So they're the defending UBA champions, and right now Aaron Williams is the defending Northeast Everweight champion. Dries Edmonds' first shot right there for him. And by the way, Derek Smith, who I introduced a little bit earlier, is going to be a, I'd like to say a non-biased commentator, but he's going to be very biased because uh, where you're from? I'm not going to be very biased, but I'm from Murder, Inc., just like Idris. So I'm rooting for Idris, but I'll be as fair as possible. He is not going to be as fair as possible. Let's, we're going to put that in right there. Don't leave this stuff. I'm going to be as fair as possible. I'm going to say, you know, come on, good shots. But, hey, you know. When they bad, I'm going to call them that, too. Oh, I'll hold you to that. If he's bad, you're going to call him to that, too. I absolutely. I have no problem telling you, Dries, when he throw it like a bad boy. Donkey water. Donkey water. All right, speaking of which, right now, marks for both bowlers. Aaron with a strike, Dries with a spare, going into frame two. Dries right now, that ball looks a little bit high, and it is. All right, we got a 3-6 up there. That was a bad shot off his hand. Yes, it was. I'm glad that you're being that you're being non-biased right now. Being honest. I'm still being a little biased because I still want Idris to win, but I'm going to be honest the whole way. Well, the last title defense that Aaron Williams had that was at Lodi Lanes was against Chris Aponte. And Aaron Williams started the match off with a 300, or in the UBA we call it a tray bomb. That is indeed called. Oh, God, hold a spin. He does hold spare. I can't come on, figure it out. See a couple of people right now hanging out with us. Hello, everybody. Or usually what I say in King of the Hill, hello, everybody. Aaron Williams is up right now. Double right here will give him the early lead. That ball looks crisp, and it is. Double Aaron Williams again, starting off with the early lead. How important is it in this sort of matchup to get the early momentum? Um, I personally don't believe in there being like a momentum thing. Cause I mean, at any point, anything can happen. You know what I mean? It's still bold. We're not gonna act like everything good off your hands going strike. I've seen a lot of weird, really weird leaves today. I've seen some really good shots leave eight tens, seven nines, buckets, all Greek churches, all types of stuff today. So. This is one of them houses that it can get really weird really quick. Right now, Aaron Williams, front three. Didn't look like he liked that one. Maybe he didn't have complete control of his footing. Results look pretty good, though. 
if you know Aaron Williams, you know that if he does not post a shot, he's going to strike. Right now, so far, so good for him. Obviously, Idris needs to start striking to put any sort of pressure on Williams. Here's that shot. He's got to make the adjustment. Uh, he overcompensated. That first two shots were high. That one's a little bit wide. Two, four, five left up there. All right. So, teammate, what do you think so far? Uh, I think Idris needs to pull his head out of his backside. Quick. That's my... That's my Hot take. In the words of Gordon Ramsay, his donkey. Like Gordon Ramsay would say. I mean, the bright side is he ain't le he ain't left nothing crazy. And so far he's made all the spares. So as long as he's making the spares, he got a shot. You know what I mean? He just gotta he gotta get going and he gotta get going soon. He don't want Aaron, he doesn't want to let Aaron get too comfortable. You let Aaron get too comfortable, Aaron will more than likely run the floor with you. Well, I'll say this right now, an all spare game in game one will not get it done. I agree. But Although he may not get the win and he may go down 0-1, it'll be a real big boost for his confidence. It'll, it'll keep him mentally in the game. It's when he start leaving all types of wild stuff that it's another story. But so far in the game. Let's see if he's going to get his first strike here. And then to uh, emulate what Derek just said, nope. Same shot, 2-4-5. Now, now, the one good thing about this is this is a best of seven. So you can lose one game. You can lose two. You can lose three. Cannot, cannot take loss number four. Do not want to lose game number four. Dries right now looking for four space spares, and he'll get that. Yeah, that was a test shot. He's going to make a ball change, I think. So now, let's look at Aaron Williams and how he's shooting, because he's starting from the left, going to the right. I wonder, and I know nobody's going to admit this now, but I wonder how much of an impact he's going to have playing that line against how Idris Edmonds plays. Even though now he's left the exact same thing Idris Edmonds has done for the past two shots. Hey, man, I told you, this house gets really weird, and it gets really weird really quick. And, I mean, like I saw what they did, and I saw what Aaron tried to do in practice, and I felt like that would definitely give him the at least the game one lead. But as you can see, Aaron went right up there and chopped his fist, so... Nothing's a given in this house. Everything, you know, you kind of got to work for. That That puts Idris down what? Idris now is only down 13. So, yeah. Idris went from down 40 to down 13 in, in a frame. So, anything can happen around here. As you said, Spares are going to keep you in this. I still say strikes are going to determine who wins this game. Absolutely going to determine who wins, but... Uh, now, now it goes back to, I don't know what he did on lane 23. That's certainly... Wasn't what we saw the first three shots. It was more like what we saw in lane 24. Uh, from here, it looked like he missed. He just missed in, so it caught a lot more to uh, the uh, the oil, and it just hydroplane past his break point. Like what Aaron did was he took a he took a real dull ball in practice. Oh, one second. So in practice, Aaron took a really dull ball and he kind of just burned himself a spot. But the problem is he pushed all the oil sort of left. So with all the oil now being pushed left, if Aaron doesn't throw it right off his hand, he's gonna leave those weird two four fives, two four five eights, things of that nature. So seems that Dries has walked into that early. Um, the, yeah, kinda. Like Dries is still throwing some pretty surfacey stuff, so everything he's got is pretty much burning out. Um, so everything he's got is going past the head, past the break point. So, you know, let's we'll see what he does. But he did make the ball change that I said he's going to make. He did make the ball change. Hopefully he can make his spare. Ooh. That, that, that was a look there. I know the camera's not over here, but Derek gave the I am not. So, yeah, exactly. He gave the thank God look. So right now we're at the halfway point of game number one. Aaron Williams right now with a 15-pin lead over Idris Edmonds. Aaron is on a strike. Idris is on a spare. Still, it's only 15 pins, which, you know, considering that Idris hasn't thrown a strike yet and he's only down 15, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. If you're halfway through the game and you're down 15, possibly 25, and you ain't mid, you ain't struck yet, you got a shot. Do have a shot at Edmonds right now. That looks very good. There we go. There we go. All right, kid, that can be the game changer. Let's go. 
that that is no question about it. That was the best shot that he's thrown so far this game. Uh, that is absolutely hands down the best shot Idris has thrown in this first game. Uh, I hope he can keep it up now. Because Aaron might not miss for the rest of the game. Well, he didn't miss on that shot. That he did not. <laughs> didn't have an issue over there, except he's throwing the ball a little bit differently now between 23 and 24. 24 looks like it's high and tight. 23 is giving it a little bit more wiggle room. Um, he's on that shot. Wow. Nice pickup by Mark Colinari, by the way. Mark Colinari made the 3, 4, 7, 10, ladies and gentlemen, and he's yelling some words that I'm not sure I can say on camera. Uh, no, you can't. Not on, not on this current social media. Aaron right now is looking buried. There's a high and tight shot right there. I don't know. We thought Aaron would run away with it with the first three. Granted, he went 7-2 after that. So, Idris keep, he keep putting pressure on him. He might get another 7-2 job, you know? It's getting late early here for Idris in game one. This almost certainly has to be able to put any sort of pressure on Williams at this point. Well, Derek said it best. Nope. Another 3-6. So now, Dries is going to need a lot of help from Mr. Williams to get back into this one. And unfortunately, I don't think he's going to get it, but we'll see what happens. Definitely not on game one. Right now, Dries Edmonds looking to make that spare. And, ooh, just does. Right now, Dries is clean. However, he's down by 35 pens, and we got three frames left. So the best that Dries can do right now is a 220. Aaron, if he goes out the door, that is a 265. So yeah, so right, right now, Dries, basically, he's got to change right now mentality from an all-spare game to an all-strike end of game. Um. I, I will say that, like, bowling alongside Idris and being someone that's bowled against Idris in numerous events and numerous places and numerous everything, um, he, has a, he has a really decent mental, mental game. It's just, like, once he starts striking, he gets tough to beat. While he's sparing, you just got to take advantage of that. He's like anybody else, you know? Like, when they're when they making spares and you can strike, you got to take advantage of that. The, pro the, thing, the difference is Dries can turn it around rather quickly. So. Dries gets a spare. I do agree with you on Dries Edmonds. Uh, we've, we've both seen both of them many, 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 many times. And for both of them, mental game plays a big part of it. They both have decent mental games. But decent is not fantastic. They can both get got from the mental aspect. Right. Except right now, no issues for Aaron Williams right now. Williams now up by 48 as we go into the ninth frame. One more strike here, and mathematically, the game's over. Yep. I mean, theoretically, you can make an argument that the game's over right now. It's not yet, but it's it's really looking like it. Basically, Dries Dries needs Aaron Williams to go open, open, and that's strike, strike. So again, right now, best that Edmund can do is 207. Aaron Williams already has a 205, not including anything else from the strike. So uh, if I'm Andreas Edmonds right now, what do I do? Uh, you, you maintain your composure. You just try to figure something out for game two. This is it's a best of seven. You know what I mean? You just grind it out. It, like, this is where this is where Andreas can be really good. His grind game has gotten a lot better over the years. And, you know, we just... Wait it out. We see what happens now. But he's definitely down 0-1, so. Now he's got a strike, hopefully. And again, he played that a little bit differently than how he's played everything else game one. Maybe he's either found something? Uh, yeah, I mean, these are pretty much like fish frames. Like These are these are frames where you can kind of fish around, see what's in front of you. Um, see what see what your ball, see what your bowling balls will give you. And try to figure something out for the next game. All right, first shot here in the 10th frame for Edmund. Well, he found something on lane 23. He, so far, he hasn't found anything on lane 24. Uh, 
Yep, that's about right. I think they're about the same. I think Drees is a little too, um, a little too behind the breakdown. So I, th I think he needs to move a little bit left. That's just my opinion. Um, but I can see why you wouldn't want to be so far left in game one of a seven gamer. So. Well, you want you want to splash the oil around a lot. You definitely want to try to derail Aaron, Aaron Williams like that, even though it really didn't matter at this point. The game was already out. That that was almost clearly more of a, let's see what happens if I do this shot. Exactly. That's, that was Aaron going with his fish around shot to see what he's got with another ball. Because he definitely made a ball. By the way, we, we do have our chat line open, so. Almost got two. Well, he got the hard two, but it really didn't matter. At the end of game one, Aaron Williams 230, Drees Edmonds 175, Williams is up, one zip. Say hello to Malachi. Hello, Andre. And, and, it, and answer the question of why is this here not on Facebook. It is on Facebook. If you click the link, you can go on to it. Malachi Moore. So we're actually trying some different tech right now. We're going to see whether or not it works or doesn't. Right, stay with it. Come on. Drace right now starting up game two. And he, well, at least he left something different this time. It's a seven pin. Right. You know, like, like I said, this is where, well, you know, the end of last game was where Drace just kind of tried to see if he could figure something out. And, I mean, based off that shot, I would say he's in a better zone than he was in just now. So. Well, Jason, I'm like the spare. If I'm Aaron Williams, I really don't change much of anything at this point. Ball's been looking pretty good. Uh, if I'm Aaron, I do exactly what Aaron's doing right now. I tried to, I tried the test shot. It didn't give me what I wanted. Go right back to what was working. You and I have both seen Aaron Williams on the transition, and I will just say this using one word. My word is fugly. Mm -hmm. I've seen him, as you've said, and he's, he said he can go 260 to 160 in a heartbeat. In this case, 230 to 130 in a heartbeat as well. I've seen that happen. Um, I've bowled league with Aaron, um, so I've seen it firsthand. It, it, Aaron, uh, it, it's weird. It's weird the way he kind of breaks things down because he breaks it down even when it's not necessary. Sometimes it can be too pretty and too perfect and too complete, right? Uh, yeah, it can. It absolutely can. But Aaron, Aaron kind of put himself in a little bit of a box, I think. And a lot of his strikes are going to look a lot like that this game. My, my. That was a fugly strike. Yeah. All the pens put down. That, that, man, that's what we're here for, right? We ain't here. We ain't here. They ain't got to be pretty. We just got to get X's. That is true. However, it does give Dries a little bit of an opening here if he can start figuring out how to get all 10 pins down with one ball. Oh, that would be lovely. You would like that. Uh, I think my entire franchise would like that. What's your franchise right now? Sitting over here, not really saying much of anything at this point. They haven't had much to say about it. That is a strike. Come on. And, and on cue, now we have murder and quaking up in the back. Absolutely. <laughs> right here, by the by the way, we have an ex-Waltzweight champion staring over here in the form of Anthony uh, Tiffany Smalls, ex-Vixens, Northeast Vixens champion over here. Jason Harden from Murder, Inc. A couple of DGF. Got the Duvita Sellers. Got a little bit of everybody. Just a little bit of everybody. We came to support. We had a tour stop here, so another good shot. First double of the match for Dries Edmonds, and now all of a sudden we got some pressure going on. And let's get the work. All right, I'll, I'll see a little note here from Andre. Dries is playing leans too straight. He can open his shoulders and swing at 8 10. He isn't giving himself any room for Aaron. I agree with that completely. Aaron is playing down and in, not pretty, but effective with some decent surface on it. Down and in over here at Lodi is an area that you can be very successful at, and there's two in a row from Aaron. Uh, did you say. Malachi said that Aaron was playing down and in. No, Andre was saying that, not Malachi. Um, he's actually not. Well, I thought that uh, Aaron was swinging the ball. To be honest. Right. Yeah, he's definitely. They both. They both definitely left. But Aaron, Aaron gave himself his A game. So, but now it's it's definitely gonna be a shot making competition. That's what it's gonna come down to now. Carrying shot making. 
Yeah, well, as, as uh, someone that likes to wear a purple beanie whose name goes by uh, the word Douglas Haran, hello, Douglas. They're both swinging the ball. Yes, they are. And now, all of a sudden, Aaron Williams leaves a nine pin, and this is Idrissa Edmonds' first chance to take a lead in this match. Aaron, I mean, if Idris throws his next shot, I'm expecting a lot of noise. I'm expecting a very mush-esque frame if he throws this next shot. I'd agree. As is mush here, was there mush sighting? Uh, mush is not here today, actually. Um, I'm not sure where he is. We won anyway, though. So, Mush, if you're watching this, we'll see you at the next match. God willing. Now, Idris is hoping God willing that he can throw another strike here. If he does, he takes the lead. And we have all sorts of murdering people throwing signs and good luck and... I have hey. trouble. Hey, hey, stay with it. Come on. We had a prediction that Teresa's gonna wash out. He didn't wash out, however, he didn't throw a really good ball either. Uh, if you thought Drews was gonna watch out, watch out. Um, I mean, I guess, but nah, he, I, I don't see Drees watching out. I don't see Drees really missing the headpin. It's a matter of how bad it's gonna be if he hits the headpin. I am just reading what the chat room is saying. Doesn't mean I agree with it. But what you and I are both going to agree with is that Dries is going to make a spare. Right now, Aaron Williams, there's the unbiasedness of our biased uh, co-commentator here. I'm going to be fair, is what I said. I never said I'd be unbiased. <laughs> but I also have to be a teammate, so I have... Good job, teammate. I have a certain obligation. Right now, going into the fifth frame of game two, Aaron Williams up by one. He took game one, 232, a lot less than that. A whole lot less than that. A whole lot less than that. Emmons right now, that ball looks very good. It is. Come on. Little, little tease on the six pin, but that goes down. Basically telling Aaron Williams, I'm not going anywhere right now, and you better throw another strike because if you don't, I may take the lead back on you. Actually, he will take the lead if Aaron does not throw another strike here. But he does. Back to a one-pin game. Both bullers on strikes as we go into the second half of game two. Now, this was the sort of back-and-forth intensity that I was expecting in game one, even though we didn't get that. Um... Because because of the way the lanes played today, if if they're playing now the way they play earlier, which it looks like they are, um, I don't, I don't know. I kind of expected it to kind of be a little weird the first game for Idris, but I also like I said earlier, Idris is he's he's developed a really strong mental game, so I kind of expect Idris to kind of figure something out, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if Idris won this game to be honest with you. For right now. Uh, Dr. Ron said he finally moved right. Yes, he did. Aaron Williams made the spare. However, and a big however here, Dries can start to take control of game two here with a pair of strikes. First one is big. Yeah, we'll uh, hopefully he makes a better shot than he did on that, on that lane the last time. Oh, well, we're going to find out right now. That ball does look a lot better. Oh, and it God, is. Let's make it work now. Big improvement from Idris Edmonds. All of a sudden now he's taking, at least he's gonna be up by 10. If there's another one here, he's gonna be up by at least 20. Theoretically 19, with the assumption, of course, that Aaron Williams is gonna get the strike. And there is a big difference between 19 and 20, especially in bowling. I wouldn't say there's a big difference. It depends on what frame you win. It, it depends on the end of the game. Yeah. Drees right now. That looks like, yep, another good shot. Buried. Drees finally moved over. Right now he's got three in a row. And more importantly, now Gauntlet's on Aaron Williams because it's it's getting late here in game two. Aaron needs to start throwing some strikes or he's going to lose his 1-0 advantage in the match. That's not a strike. 3-6-10. Um, Did you have one ready? 
I mean, this is kind of the way I expect the game two to go. Like I said, I bowl with Aaron on plenty of occasions. I we talk about the match, Jay. By, by the way, that that new voice that you heard, his name is Jason Harden. You already know, baby. You know, first of all, going pepper your burgers and your sweet potato fries are going to get cold. All right. Second of all, murder season. One one. <laughs> Jason Harden, by the way, from the UBA World Champions Murder Inc., as well as almost half the team. Williams right now is coming back in. That was a good shot. However, best that Aaron Williams can do right now at this point is a 236. Jason can go out the door and return the favor for a 268. Nothing like the Luddite lanes, right? 172, 60? 230. Not 230. <laughs> oh, I love this place. <laughs> I hate it so much. Yo, the is so big and it's so worldwide. Grace right now looking for four in a row. Ooh, hey, hey, I thought hey, he had it. Hey. Does not. Tenpin. Hey, all right. Stay with me. Still up by 19. Theoretically, even though right now it may be nine. Assuming that he makes a spare here. And spare made. So right now, Dries is up by 21. Theoretically, going into the ninth frame, though he's on a spare and Aaron Williams is on a strike. So technically, it's 11. That one, however, is big. If Dries throws a strike in the ninth frame, he cannot get shut out. Anything less than that, and Aaron Williams can go out, shoot the 236, and steal a game in which it doesn't look like it was his for the stealing a couple of seconds ago. No, if he just goes non-spare and then punches out an attempt, they tie. That's right. That's why I said he can't lock him out if he throws a strike. However, that is not a nine. That is an eight. And right now, best Idris Edmonds can do, if he spares and strikes out to 235, Aaron Williams can go for 236. Looks like he'll make the spare. Looked a little bit interesting for a second. It is not. However, Dre makes the spare. He's up technically by 39, but if Aaron Williams goes out the door, he'll be down by one. And that will be a big one because that will signify the end of the game. Williams up first. Big shot here for your strikes. There it is. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, we were chatting about this before, the difference between 19 and 20 and 21. And back then it wasn't a big difference. Now it is a huge difference. Going in, Aaron Williams needs them all to lock out Idris Edmonds and go up to zip. Anything less than that. And as Derek said, Idris can go out to at least tie, if not win, and even it up one apiece. See what happens. See what happens. First shot out, gotta have it, gets it. That's one. I definitely think you'd have to have that one if you're Aaron Williams. Because if, if he, cause technically he's still trailing. So if he didn't leave that, Idris would actually not even need a mark, but it doesn't matter, he got the first one. Second ball and 10th coming up. And he leaves the seven pin. So now, and that's huge because he goes to 25, as you said, and you're right. AG throws the first one, he can tie with a full mark. If he throws the first two, he wins. And we already have predictions. One prediction to Dries, nine count first shot. I will not mention who, but I think we can all guess. Ironically, whoever that was, I agree. 
That's your own teammate we're talking about here. All right, so Derek Smith rooting against his own teammate right now. He's, he's predicting against his teammate right now. Jason Harden is saying, you're saying a strike, right? Duh. There you go, 10th frame, Idris Edmonds must hit this one. First shot out, gotta have it. He gets it. Come on, kid. Now, here's the deal. If he, yeah, one more and it's 1-1. One, one. Anything less than that, and he must shoot the spare to tie. Looks like Pocket Kings, meanwhile, or in the team ranking match against TakeOver, looks like Pocket Kings is all sorts of in control. But Idris wants to be in control of this game. Second strike here, he hits it, it's over. No, ooh. That would be, well, it would be a roll off. He actually got real lucky because it was almost the four and the five up there and he would have to convert that. Turns out it's a five pin. This would be a really bad time to miss a five pin at this point. Ah, he's not gonna miss a five pin. Nope. All right, two frame roll off. I get to go over there and explain he's a two frame Wait. roll off. You get to be behind the mic. Hey, does that cancel out? It does not. No, sir, two frame roll off coming right up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron. we are looking Aaron. at 225 a piece for game two. So now we are breaking off into a two frame roll off according to Gordon Pepper, who is going to go set that up for us right now. Hey, Dougie, you said that was a nervous shot. <laughs> You're a clown, Dougie. Trying to settle Idris down, get him ready for this roll off. He's still a little upset about that shot. He threw in a second ball in the 10. A couple teammates over there trying to, uh, you know, settle him down, get him ready for this roll off. Hopefully still make this game 1-1. One, one. Andre, it's really weird out here right now, man. I ain't about to lie to you. Nah, hey, hey, Dougie, not for nothing, man. It's been weird in here like that all day. I've seen more righties leave seven pins than I've seen lefties leave seven pins today. It's been crazy today. Like, now I get to eat my fries while Derek's talking. Gordon's taking a, a temporary lunch break. Nah, hey, Andre, the reason they look like they playing a little more funny than normal is because of what Aaron did to the lanes in practice. Like, I mean, it wasn't a bad idea. I just don't know if that is going to come back to haunt him in the in a best of seven. Because, like, after that first game, like, Idris looked like he kind of figured it out a little bit. So now, as long as Drees can make good, like real good quality shots and kind of keep the games close, this might really favor Drees right now, not for nothing. Dougie, stop lying to the crowd talking about some tough pair nonsense, man. All these pairs is <laughs> fine china. I'll say this, 23 and 24 is definitely not the toughest pair at Lodi. That's coming from a gentleman who bowled at Lodi for quite a while. I, I may have won some hardware here. Oh, and has won some hardware here. 23 and 4, 
You heard it here first, is not the hardest pair in the house. I second that. All right, so we got the 10th frame, the two frame roll off set up now. Idris is gonna go first with his shot in the ninth. Let's see what happens. Dougie, it's like you're a UEA official or something. You just be trying to tell everybody all the rules, huh? Dougie, you were correct. Way to correct Gordon Pepper. Good job. If Idris was here, Dougie, I'm sure he would say thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and let you uh, take that up with Idris. I'm not telling him that. Matter of fact, Dougie, one time for the one time, I'm going to look out for you. Adrees! Adrees! Dougie said because he caught on to the fact that uh, you started on, you went on the wrong lane, he said you owe him a shot. <laughs> Dree said okay on camera. I just want you to know that, Dougie, in case you ain't hear him say it. Hey, Dre, it wasn't really right, his take fault. Two. Sometimes you must make advantage, take advantage of so what wound up happening, and Doug's absolutely right on this. Um, on the game, after each one, when they moved it to the next game, instead of reversing it, they set it on a new game. And by doing that, that's an automatic, uh, that's an automatic crossover. So Idris should have started on lane 24 instead of lane 23 in the roll-off. So, fixed. Aaron starts the two-frame roll-off off with a spare. Dries starts off with a strike. Yep, so now, now it's going to come down to that frame, as it should. Well, that, what that strike means is that Idris better not do on 23 what he just did when he was pulling on the wrong lane. Second shot here. Looks good, it is. Now basically must, what must happen here is assuming that Aaron shoots the third strike, there will not be another roll off. Because based on the spare, unless you decide that you want to throw a gutter ball on the fill, there's no way Dries is getting 50. And I don't think Dries is going to throw the gutter ball on the fill.
Darren Williams finishes with 50. Dries Edmonds must hit not just the first one, he must hit the first two. First shot coming out, he's got to have this one. And he does not, and Aaron Williams is going to go up to zip. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 0-2, Aaron Williams. When somebody said Dre owes me a drink, no he doesn't. But I'll say this, Adrice is going to be upset with himself. He had the shot to win this one in the 10th frame in regulation during that second strike. Doesn't do it. So now there's, at least, and uh, Dries is showing his disappointment, and he's absolutely right on that. And the funny thing is this, he actually got away with one because I didn't even notice in that fill that they started on different lanes. Bad Gordon. Well, there's the strike. Came's up one ball too late at the end of game two. 205, 205, Aaron Williams. He wins the roll off 50 to 40. Williams is up two zip. And we go into game three. All right, let me start the new game out. I'll give you the mic back. All right, so it's 0-2, Aaron Williams. He wins after forcing Idris to double in the 10th. And we are now starting game three. Aaron Williams starts off with a strike. All right, now you're G. Sedmans. You've had three different opportunities to win game two. You do not take advantage of any of them. What's going on here, Jason Harden? I got to go bowl league. I got to go bowl league, and um, it's going to be a comeback. Drees in six. Ooh, so let me ask you this, Jay, before you go out to league. You're a Drees. You had three shots to win that game. And now you're starting off with that. What's going on in your mind, and how do you get to win game three? Execution. That's all. You got to make shots. Aaron's going to fall apart. He made a little ball change, but it's, I still don't trust it. Dries in six. I'm going to hear about it later. Well, you'll definitely hear about it later. I don't know if it'll be positive or negative, but you'll definitely hear about it later. Positivity. Murder season. Well, I, very positivity for Murder, Inc. You guys had a good match today. You got a good win. We're going now, and it all of a sudden looks like everybody at Murder, Inc. went out for a pizza break. Three seven is right now, second frame coming up. There is a strike. Now, you know, the other thing is this. He's still here. He's still here. Yo. Does he want a fry? No. Yeah, take a fry. Yo, go and have You probably got this for free, too. I definitely didn't get it for free. Aaron Williams is taking no breaks for free right now. Aaron Williams, front two, taking the lead now. Take a bet that Aaron does not strike right now. You can take a bet. I don't know. Ask them. Social media. Does anybody want to bet Aaron does not strike this shot right now? Uh, you got a bet. Who, bet good, Dougie. I see you tonight. I told you. Oh, what the fuck was that? Uh, I believe the bar tip's going to be uh, five dollars. The care of Jason Harden. Wherever you go in a league, uh, I, I hope you bet well. Three in, a row, three in a row for Aaron, and all of a sudden this is starting to look like game one. Nah, he, uh, Jason's already gone. There's going to be no running it back. And maybe it's a good thing because that's a double for Dries. Dries right now down 10, going into frame four. It's a game that I would think that if you're Dries, you need. 
badly. Right now, I see Keith B over here. Hello, Keith B. Hello, uh, Gordon. So you, now your teammate's Aaron Williams. Yes. How's he doing so far? I think he's up 2 nothing, right? Uh, that he is. Uh, I'm over here doing a ranking match, like I'm not paying attention. Drees right now, three in a row. Say this, Drees got mad or frustrated or something. Now he's throwing the ball the way that he probably should have at the end of game two. How, how is you guys doing so far? How is you guys doing? That's good. That was good, Gordon. Yeah, that was great. Uh, good English. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're doing okay. One here, first two matches. And Williams right now really doing good. Front four going into fifth frame. for five, doesn't get it, nine pin. Aaron Williams right now, looking to make the spare, assuming that he does. He's still up, but a strike from Idris will change that. As we go into the fifth frame of game three, Aaron Williams is up to zip. Williams will make the spare, and he does. We're getting some silly chat messages here. He's going to hang out with me for a little bit, it looks like. Drees right now can take the lead here with a striking game. Three. Ooh. Two, four, five, seven. Drees is just not enjoying the prosperity right now. I mean, right. Right now, that's the tale of this match early. Dries has had his chances. Hmm? No, he's not. Well, he's executing, but not at the critical points that he needs to. He'll make the spare. But he had a shot. He had three different chances to win the game in game two. Didn't take any of them. Had a shot to take the lead here in game three. He didn't do that. Dries right now down by 13 as we start the second half of game three. And then right now that ball looks good, it is. I'm sure he's thinking to himself, where the heck was that shot on 23? Now Streis is down by 13. He needs Aaron Williams to stop striking. Williams right now is saying, nope. I want to keep striking. That's what Aaron Williams is saying. Right now, Williams up by 13 going in the seventh frame. Another strike here, and he'll maintain the lead. If he doesn't strike here, once again, Dries Edmonds will have another chance to take the lead on him. Aaron Williams right now looking to have the strike here. Doesn't, 3-6-10, got real lucky. He didn't leave some other things up there. That was not a well-thrown ball. And once again, Idris Edmonds will have a chance to take the lead here. Aaron Williams right now will make the spare. This will be opportunity number four. There's a shot coming up. Got it. Double for Dries Edmonds. Now he does take the lead at this point. Well, he doesn't take the lead yet. He's down by three. Another strike here will give him the lead. He can go out the door for 266. Aaron Williams can go out for 259. It's 
for the lead. That ball looks good to me, and it is. Buried shot, three in a row for Dries. And he needed it in the most opportune time. This time around, it looks like that is a shot to take this one. Will Aaron Williams put on the pressure? He did the other times that he was threatened. Let's see how Aaron Williams responds. Responds really well, there's a strike. Going to the ninth frame. Again, Aaron cannot shut out Idris Edmond. However, if he throws a shot in the ninth frame, he will force Dries to get the next three. Right now, it is a seven pin game. Dries Edmond up by seven. I know it says Aaron's up by three, but Idris is on a double and Aaron is only on a single. Ninth frame here, huge frame for Williams. Shot right here for Williams, that ball looks sight. Maybe not the tightest ball that I've ever seen, but all the pins will, and that's good. Got the carry. Here we go again, Dries Edmonds. Striking the ninth first, two in the tenth, he takes game three. For a shot here for Edmund, that ball looks a little bit high, and he leaves the 3-6. Lane 23 has been a nightmare for Dries Edmonds this whole entire match so far. And Dries went from controlling his own destiny to now being down. Assuming he'll make the spare here, and he will. Dries now down by five as we go into the 10th frame. Dries can go out the door for 244. Aaron can go out for 259. A mark from a Dries here means that Aaron Williams got to show up. If he goes out the door, that means Aaron's first ball's got to be a strike. Reese here. Now that one's good. Again, lane 24 has not been an issue. It's been lane 23. For whatever reason, he can't find it. And uh, no, Doug, Dries cannot sub in the to wiki for game four. And we all know what that's about. Second shot here. Nope, three, six, ten. Oh, Dries is telling himself he's dropping the fucking ball. He's dropped game two. He's in danger of dropping game three. However, the one thing that he did do, and it's not really gonna matter whether or not he makes a spare or not, because if Aaron Williams strikes or marks, he will win game three. If he opens, Dries will win game three. That's basically what it comes down to. And it really doesn't matter at this point because it doesn't matter if it's 32 or 35. So Dries is going to finish with a 231. He's up by 32 over Aaron Williams. Basically, he needs Aaron Williams to make a mistake right here. This is for game three. Got it. No mistake. Aaron Williams is going to take game three. And Aaron Williams is going to go up three zip over Dries Edmund. theoretical standpoint, you can make the argument that Idris Edmond should be up two games to one, and I would not argue that point. He probably should be, except he has not executed down the stretch in games two and three when he needs to, and in the World Championship Series, if you want to win, you need to execute. At the end of game three, Aaron Williams, 246, Idris Edmonds, 231. Aaron Williams is up three zip, which means now... And I haven't said this in a couple years, but now I get to. The margin of error is zero. There's four games left. Idris Edmond must win all of them. Or Aaron Williams will retain the title. Game four coming up.
Jay Sedman right now. That ball looks good. Whether or not he's going to win this game is really going to depend on whether or not he can figure out lane 23. That's really what it boils down to at this moment. And Williams right now. First shot out. That ball looks good, and it is. Whatever adjustments Aaron Williams needed to make at the end of game two and in the middle of game three, he made them. Williams right now, and Dries even strike striking game four. If Aaron wins this, this is over. And I can eat my cheeseburger and fries that have been sitting here now for two hours. And it's nice and cold. But knowing my luck will be here for four hours and everything will be frigid. Aaron Williams, two strikes, gauntlet passed over Dries Edmonds on lane 23, and this is the lane that's been giving him issues. And then right now, that ball looks good to me, and it is. Of course, now the question is, where has that been? That was definitely a different line. Jace right now, that ball's a little bit high, carries it anyway. For those of you that just joined in, this is Gordon Pepper. This is game four of the heavyweight title match between Aaron Williams and Adresa Edmond. And it is right now three zip in favor of the champion, Aaron Williams. Williams right now looking to keep pace third frame, he does. Strike over here from Aaron Williams. Right now we are tied, three strikes apiece, both bowlers going into fourth frame. And Williams needs one more game. Williams right now, fourth frame. That shot looks decent. And he got him. Decent in this case is all the pins going down. And right now, everyone's throwing strikes. Gauntlet passed over to Dre again. Dries right now, that ball looks good, it is. Jason Harden, before he, before he left, uh, said Dries in six. If you're gonna say Dries in, it's gonna have to be Dries in seven. Right now, still even, four strikes apiece, going in frame five. Right now, that ball looks oh, a little bit high. He traps them. Carries the four. It goes. Gauntlet past Aaron Williams. Williams right now looking to keep it pace. And he, no, maybe, no. 2-8 leaves up there. Two falls down to the last second. Eight does not. Once again, for the past three out of four games, Reese Edmond has a lead. Williams right now will make the spare. Reese up by quick 11 as we go into the sixth frame. Aaron right now looking to get back on the strike train, and he will not do a 10 pin. This may be the oil transition that everybody's been talking about. We'll find out. How's Williams going to make the transition? And more importantly, is Williams going to be able to figure it out before Dries drops striking? Needs to make a spare, he will. Right now, Dries Edmonds, front five. Shot going down, he doesn't like it. There's a reason. Two, four, ten up there. And 
is looking to make this spare. He won't. Right now it is Aaron Williams back up on five as we go into the seventh frame of game four. Just a reminder, if Aaron Williams wins this, this is game set and match. Drees must win this game. Seventh frame, first ball coming out. Ooh, looks high, nine pin. Now after both bowlers throw the front four, Drees takes a quick lead with the fifth strike and then he gives it right back with the open in the sixth. Looks like he will make the spare in the seventh, which he does. Now can Aaron Williams take advantage? Williams up by five as we go into the seventh frame. Williams here, the ball skidded outside, comes back in, looks good. Aaron right now up by five, a strike here, and he cannot be shut out, and he can end the game and the match. Anything less than that, and Idris Edmonds can come back and win the game and force game five. Shot right here, looking to double up. Oh, there's a double, but not the one that he wants. Two, eight, ten up there. And a huge advantage right now for Idris Edmond to come back and take this game. This is makeable, but not really makeable. Williams right now. Oh, gets two, does not get the bounce. Now 236 for Aaron. Drees wants a re-rack. He is more than welcome to have it. You can have as many re-racks as you want. If Aaron goes out the door, it is a 236. Edmonds can go out the door for a 243. But, and we have now said this the past couple of games, can Drees close out? because the last two games, the answer's been no, which is why he's down three up. Shot right here, Mark takes the lead, there's the strike. Drees right now. Up by seven. Ninth frame here, and again, the strike here, he cannot be shut out. Anything less, he can be shut out. He wants the re-rack, he can get the re-rack. You know, if any, anything like this, this is something that calms him down a little bit, maybe he needs it. If you're a bowler and in this sort of match, you use anything, and I mean anything, as long as it's legal, of course, in order to calm yourself down, get the nerves down, whatever you need to do. Mark Colinari, meanwhile, is hoping, and hopefully I will be seeing him momentarily. You gotta put a score down, though. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, gotcha. All right now, that ball's a little bit high. He's gonna get nine. However, despite the re-rack, that was not a well-thrown ball. Three pin is up there. Jesus is gonna make the spare, and he will. However, the question now becomes, does he need to get up in the 10th frame? Because Aaron Williams, with a strike in the 9th and two in the 10th, that will be game and match, and Idris can't do anything about it. And there's one of the strikes that he needs. So here is the situation. Best Idris can do is a 233. 
Aaron King off the door for 236. First shot here. Needs a strike. That's one. Now all of a sudden you hear the Pocket Kings people that are still here giving some applause. Except I couldn't hear you cheering the whole time. Now I can. Yeah, exactly. Here's the deal. If he strikes out and he gets eight, this match is over. First things first, he's got to strike out. Or he's got to get the first strike here. Second strike here. Oh! Goes from pocket 710 to everything goes down. Leaves the pocket 710 again. The match is done. Because Aaron only needs eight. This is game, set, match. Done. Does not matter what Idris does in the 10th frame. He's going to get locked out. Aaron Williams is going to win 236 to, to whatever. And Aaron Williams is going to win 4-zip. In a match that um, I don't think anybody was expecting to go 4-zip. Maybe Aaron Williams was. But... That is it. I will wait for uh, congratulatory stuff. Then we'll have a quick interview with Mr. Williams. In the words of Andre, and I believe that's Andre Wilbon, yes, he handled business. Did Aaron look bored? I don't know. I don't think he looked bored. I think he looked concentrated. All right. I'll be right back with an interview. Aaron, let's come hang out over here. Over here, because I want to hang out. I want to bring a Mark Culinarian eventually. But right now, I want to get an Aaron Williams over here. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It was, it was, it was a hard fought match. It may have looked easy up there, but you have to know your opponent and know what they're capable of. It was not hard. You saw Idris fight back really hard, especially that game two. Fought back to a draw. Just didn't work out for him today. Well, games two, games three, and games four. Idris had the lead on you, and he not only had the lead on you, he had it late in the games. Late meaning second half of game two, game three, game four. What was the key of being able to turn around? Well, the key is, especially when you're down that late, is don't get flustered. Make sure you throw good, good shots. I mean, if the guy beats you, he beats you, but don't beat yourself. Don't, uh, uh, he's ahead, you gotta make him work for it. Maybe put a little pressure on him, see what happens. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that roll off in game two. Uh, a little bit, because he started with a strike, you started with a spare, and then you turned it on. Please explain. Well, it, whenever you're in the roll-off, you got to pull the ninth tenth frame over again. So if you're, gonna, if you're not going to strike, it's the first ball or the last ball you don't want to strike on. The first ball you strike out, you still get 50. If the last ball, then you know, you're at 58, 59, whatever. Uh, you don't want to miss anything in the middle. So, you want, so if you're going to test something, test it that ninth frame. When I went over, I, I forgot I came, I came out light on that, in that, ninth, that ninth frame. I went to the tenth frame. I straightened up a little bit. I was able to bury him in the pocket, put 50 on him, so he had to strike out to beat me. Even though he struck the first one, it didn't matter whether he struck or I spared. All right, let's see if I can bring Mark over here. Mr. Culinary. Actually, Keith, I'll bring both of you in here because you guys uh, both chatted here. So um, I'll give you the mic here. Tell, tell me a little bit about this win and what it means for the Pocket Kings. Uh, I mean, it's just that we're here in the New Jersey Northwest. Um, we kind of flew under the radar for the past couple seasons. Um, last year we made it to the playoffs and gave Murder, Inc. a tough match. Um, they went on to win it and they, they earned it. Um, but we're here. We show why we're here. Aaron's held the belt. Um, he's defended the belt when he's needed to. And he represents us extraordinarily well. Uh, he's not only defended it, he's defended against some of the best in the New Jersey Northwest. That's correct, he has. No, I mean, each of your opponents have been from teams that made the playoffs last year. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, they're all tough bowlers, tough teams, but anybody can win on any given day. Um, you just have to go up there, put a little heart into it, and maybe come out with a win, and he's showing why he keeps doing it. So you got a couple more matches to close out the year. What's your thoughts on your potential opponents? Um, I think uh, it's either Chris Aponte or Joseph Heim. I would have to bowl next month. Uh, I don't know if they bowled, if they bowled their match already, probably this weekend or whatever. Um, I, bowled, I bowled Chris twice. Both time we, I bowled 
I bowled him, we went to seven games. First time he beat me, second time I beat him. It'd be a great match if I bowl if I bowl Ponte again. If I had to bowl Joe Heim, I know he's hungry. You know, he, he's coming up. I know what that feels like. I'm I'm still hungry. I'm full yet. So it looks looks like it. Well, it looks like you got some skin and bones on you still. It looks like you still need some more food. Exactly. I, I'm gonna keep eating. Uh, any last comments? Um, just great match with Dries. Uh, he he he. He, had, he, had, he held his mental fortitude great today. He, he bowled well. He just didn't get, didn't get, uh, you know, he just didn't get the breaks that I got. There you go. Congratulations again, sir. Thank you. And uh, this is Gordon Pepper for the UBA signing off. Have a good one.